Here we've got Olivier Guita, CEO and founder of Global Strat, to weigh in on the latest. I mean, there we heard from our colleagues a call this a victory for both Iran and President Trump. That's certainly how both sides are portraying it to their domestic audiences. Is it really possible that this is a victory for both sides? In this case, I would uh, disagree that it's a victory for Tehran. I mean, this was the first response from the West since 1979. The Americans had a complex since the Carter administration after the take of the embassy and the debacle of the operation that ensued uh, to ever strike uh, Iran. And that's the first time that the West has retaliated against a war that has been going on for 40 years. So we were all talking about, you know, World War III. But there's been a war of attrition from the regime in Tehran since 1979 versus the US, France, and the UK, namely. You're talking about that being an unusual situation where the US has decided to retaliate against Tehran. They've obviously stepped back slightly, given those public comments from President Trump yesterday. So what do you think is the calculus inside the administration right now? Look, a, a couple of things. I mean, we've seen that President Trump has been extremely uh, prudent when it came to retaliation. After the uh, U.S. drone was taken down by Iranians, after the attack on, on Saudi Arabia, everybody thought that he would retaliate, it, and he didn't. Uh, but his red line was basically the loss of American lives and also the images of the embassy uh, in Baghdad that was a big no-no for him, and that's why... It pushed him to strike at Iran. Well, why, well, what I was asking was why not then go further given the missile attacks on U.S. facilities inside Iraqi bases? Because I would put to you that this was a calculated move from both sides. I mean, the Americans had three hours to go away uh, for them to avoid any loss of lives. This was a very well harmonized Hollywood-style attack that basically was there for the regime to save face. The big issue we're going to see going forward is Iran possibly using its main weapon, terrorism. Uh, and that's the big joker and the big question. If there's an attack against U.S. interest in, in London or Paris tomorrow, how will President Trump react? Well, I think it's important to remember that it's only, you know, it's been less than a week since this really kicked off. So it may be premature to be drawing conclusions, uh, you know, either way. And just this morning on Iranian TV, we heard that a senior Iranian guards commander said that they, uh, Iran will take harsher revenge soon. So obviously this strays from what we've heard officially from the Iranian foreign minister. Uh, but, I mean, clearly there's some division still in Iran in terms of what comes next. So how confident can we be that this really is the end of the line in terms of the response from Iran? Uh, for sure, it's not the end of the line. I mean, Tehran is usually taking its time to retaliate. For us, it was a surprise to see that they retaliated so quickly, but it was because it was coordinated and it was clear for them that they needed to do that. But usually they take their time. Uh, and there's no... Uh, really action that is not going to be taken by the regime. And whether you th think there's division, there's no division between Khamenei and the Revolutionary Guards, and they want to take revenge. So they will use uh, asymmetrical warfare, terrorism, because they know and they've seen that President Trump is extremely forceful when it comes to loss of American lives, uh, and they're not going to take the risks. Both sides do not want war, and they'll avoid this at all costs. Uh, but a protracted you know, terror campaign is in the works. Uh, European security services are extremely concerned about the heightened uh, scare and Hezbollah cells in Europe. So one final question for you then. Let's leave aside the military action. Let's return to the idea of this nuclear deal negotiated in 2015. President Trump, long a critic of that deal, has said he'd like to see it replaced. Do you think that the behavior of Iran the last few days, we've heard comments about their views on the JCPOA, as it's called, do you think that that deal is now just officially dead in the water and cannot be revived? No, because if you see, I mean, Trump is actually the one pushing for renegoti uh, renegotiating the deal. I mean, time and again, in Biarritz during the G20 and at the UN General Assembly, he asked to meet with President Rouhani, and the Iranians refused. So, uh, and Trump is a businessman that wants to make a deal. And for him, as you saw yesterday, he wants to make a deal with Iran still today.
We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time, Olivier. That's Olivier Gita. He's the CEO and founder of Global Strat.